This is, uh, what is this? Doxa. What? Huios, Doxa Huios, uh, an affiliate of the Never Hold Dose Ministry. Bible teacher, Minister Dennis Rogers, grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus the Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Here at Doxa Huos, Doxa Huos, glory of the Son, the Son of Glory, we believe in the doctrine of predestination and the sovereignty of God. I did previous teaching. Predestination and the sovereignty of God is the gospel. Predestination, predestination, that's, that's an English word. That's the English word predestination. The correct word is pro orizo, pro orizo, pro orizo. There's no H's in the Greek. You have what you call a diacritical mark. That is the H is a sound at the end, the Latin's added an end, and that's where we get our word horizon. The horizon is the division, it's the D mark, is the diacritical mark or the demarcation mark between light and darkness. On a globe, if you have a globe, you have a demarcation mark going straight through the globe. I'm gonna bring a globe down and show you on the globe. One side is light, one side is light. The other side is darkness. It's the same thing that's going on in the world today. The world rotates on its axis and it turns from light to darkness. Do you know which way the world turns? The way the, way the earth turn out? No. It turns from right to left. It goes from right to left. The earth goes this way. It goes from this way to this way. That's how the earth turn every day. Sun don't move. The sun does not move. The sun don't move. Moon, it moves, but the sun, it don't move. Okay? Yes. So it turns from light to darkness. That's what, that's what predestination is. We have been called out of darkness into light. And we have a tendency to turn from light to darkness. Light to darkness. And turning from light to darkness, that's called what, Charles? That's if called we turn, If we turn, turn from light to darkness. What light to darkness? Yes. That's called sin. What do we do? No, it's not. What do we do? What's that called? That's turn. Repentance. Turn. What? Repentance. Repenting. Amen. That's what we're doing. Accept you. Repent. Or accept you. Metanoia. Turn. Accept you repent or accept you turn. You shall die in your sins. You got to repent because we turn from darkness to light. So we turn from the darkness back to the light. We go back into the darkness, we come out of light, that's called repenting. And that's the Greek word metanoia, meta, M-A-M-E-T-A-N-O-I-A, metanoia. We get our word noose from that, right? Yes. That's noose and meta means to turn, right? Yes. So we turn the mind. We turn the mind. Continually we ought to be turning our mind from the world to heaven or the kingdom of God. Hello? Amen. Amen. That's called repenting. And that's what the earth do. It turns from light to darkness. The, we believe in pro orizo. Pro orizo. Pro orizo. Pro orizo. But it's more to predestination than pro orizo. You also have to have proi. Pro. Proi. Toy. Mazo. Proi. Toy. Mazo. You also have to have a. A. Fo. Rizzo, Afo Rizzo, and then there's another one that I'm teaching us now, is Kat Artizo. We define the Word of God. We go back to the original Greek, the original Hebrew. The Bible was not written in the English language. I was just looking at one of my books, because I was going to uh, uh, bring out in this teaching I'm doing on Easter, the three days and three nights. And I'm reading this passage, out of three days and three nights by Ralph Woodrow. And listen to what Ralph Woodrow says. See, you're always going to learn something here at the Never Hold Dose Ministry. Uh, he's talking about, he's talking about Matthew 28. He's talking about Matthew 28 and 1. He's talking about Matthew's account of 28 and 1. And he says, he says, because many people don't believe Christ was crucified on a Friday. They, some say Wednesday, some say Thursday. He was crucified on a Friday because to the Jew, a part is the whole. And many don't understand that. Let me read to you what, what he says uh, about the Friday. Uh, 
I want to read this to you. A day for preparing spices. It says, according to the Wednesday, Saturday teaching that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, between the two, Sabbaths was a common work day on Friday, thus allowing the women a day during which they could prepare the spices. But there is no reason to assume that a whole day was required to prepare spices. In Jewish practice, and this is what the problem is in understanding the three days and the three nights. The problem is we want to look at it from an American perspective when there was no such thing as America at the time that Jesus the Christ was crucified. So you cannot look at it from an American time set. Not only that, we don't know when we must remember that Dionysius changed the calendar. And we find that recorded in our Alexander Hislop. Let's turn and look at it. Let's turn and look at it. Dionysius the Little changed the calendar to make the date fit with, uh, this, uh, with the Julian calendar. Okay? Let's look on page 105. You look on page 105, you look on page 105, you look at page 105, look at page 105, mm -hmm. are you there? Yes. yes. It says, look at it where it says, among the lint, write it down in the middle of the page, you see it? Mm. On your right hand side of your page, it said, among the lint, among the pagans, yeah. you see it? Yes. No. Help Charles out, please. Okay, yes. It said, among the pagans, this Lent, that's the Lent, that's the time they have before Easter. Among the pagans, this Lent seems to have been an indispensable preliminary to the grand annual festival in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Tammuz. We find that recorded in Ezekiel chapter 8, right? Yes. That's what this is. Easter is the worship of Tammuz. That's what it is. It's the, Easter is the mother with the baby in arms. Among the pagans, this Lent seems to have been an indispensable preliminary to the great annual festival in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Tammuz, which was celebrated by alternate weeping and rejoicing, and which in many countries was considerably later than the Christian festival. When he's talking about Christian, Charles, what is he talking about? Roman Catholicism. All, always remember that. When they mention Christian today, and you read Christian in your book, don't ever forget that, church. When they're talking about Christian, when they're talking about Christian, they're talking about Roman Catholicism, what Constantine brought into the church in 324 A.D. when he issued his Edict of Toleration. Constantine issued an Edict of Toleration where he said that they was going, not, was going to put up with the Christians, they was going to conciliate the heathen, and they not, was not going to kill Christians anymore. And he made that determination, he made that determination, he made that determination because he was losing his empire. He was losing his empire, and in the myth of Mary, it tells us he was losing his empire. So since he was losing his empire, and the Goths, the Visigoths, all the Anglo-Saxons was coming down from, the, all the Anglo-Saxons was coming down from the North. Bring my Europe map, map up my map of Europe. All the Anglo-Saxons was coming down from the north and they was attacking Rome and they was taking the kingdom for him. So for him to not lose his kingdom, you don't have it? Why? Why you guys don't have it? Well, how's Jeremiah going to bring up my pictures if he got it? He's supposed to be in there. Go get him, man. The Gauls, the Visigoths, the Gauls, the Asagoths, they were all coming down from the north. They were all, all coming down from the, from the north in Europe, the north in Europe. Come on, man, with my pictures. You're supposed to not, he's not supposed to be the only one to have them, Eric. Where yours at? It's supposed to be on a dish. Y'all supposed to have my stuff ready, man. Uh, they was coming down from the north. The Goths, the Asagoths, the Gauls, the Visigoths, those are what you call your Anglo-Saxons. They were coming down from the north, attacking Western uh, Europe. That was Rome. That's where Constantine was. And Constantine couldn't defeat them because there were so many of them. And they was coming, when they was coming down, he didn't want to lose his kingdom. 
So since he didn't want us to lose the kingdom, he amalgamated their paganism with Christianity. And what he did was issue an edict of toleration. He issued an edict of toleration in 324. He issued an edict of toleration in 324 A.D. This says, this passage I'm reading here, it says legislation on religion. And it talks about from persecution to patronage. And what he did was issue an edict of toleration. It said the first document, document that we must examine is the Edict of Milan promulgated in 313. As presented by Eusebius, this is a historic document issued jointly by Constantine and Licinius. Scholars today are somewhat skeptical of such an agreed text deriving from the meeting of the two. What I'm telling you is, here I'm bringing in to show you how they got Easter or how they got the worship of Tammu, how they got lent into the church. And when I say church, what am I talking about, Charles? Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism. What is Roman Catholicism? What is Roman Catholicism? She's the mother of, of all idolatry. Let's turn that Bible to the Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. Do you got my map? I bring my map up then if you got my map. I ask you to bring it up. Bring my map up. Thank you very much. Eric, you're supposed to have your own pictures. I want you to not to do that anymore. You can see up here where it says Sweden. You can look at the map and say Sweden, Finland, Norway, Russia. Up at Norway, they came down, Denmark, they came down to England. You can see France there, and you can see Italy at the bottom of the map. You can see Italy, north, south. Italy is south of Norway, Sweden, and Finland. And they came down, and when they began to attack, what he did was Christianity was in Rome, down in France. You can see Germany and Poland. When they came down and they began to attack, Constantine, what he did was he amalgamated those pagan gods that they brung down into Italy, into France. This is where your Roman Catholicism was at the time. They, he brung them, they brung their gods down, and what they did was so that they wouldn't overtake him. He amalgamated pagan god with the Roman Catholic Church that was in the Roman Catholic Church that was in order or in place at the time in 324 AD. Because he did not want to lose his kingdom. So he issued an edict of toleration in 312, 313 AD. He issued an edict of toleration in 312, 312, 313 AD. And that's what I'm reading you about. It said the first document which we must examine is the Edict of Milan promulgated in 313 as presented by Eusebius. This is a historic document issued jointly by Constantine and Licinius. Scholars today are somewhat skeptical of such an agreed text deriving from the meeting of the two as recorded by Lactant Lactani Lactantius. It is a letter addressed to Licinius to the eastern provinces under his control, but one which reflects the agreement which he had made to implement in the East the policy which Constantine was already pursuing with regard to religion in the West. Such questions about the origins of the document are not of first importance since according to Baines, the facts for which the Edict of Miley once stood are still facts. Though the Edict itself has gone the way of many another symbolic representation of historical truth. In the Edict, Persecution was brought to an end. They say we're not going to persecute the Christians anymore. And 320, 312, 313, that's when they stopped killing real Christians. That was Christians that didn't have no Easter, they didn't have no Christmas, they didn't have no pagan, no symbols, none of that in the church. When 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 Con so what they was doing was they was killing all the Christians that did not worship paganism. They did not have no, 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 uh, talk to me. They did not have no Eucharist. No. They didn't have this. They did not have this. This, the deadly wound being here, really, this is coming back in. This is what Luther fought against. When 312, 313, they didn't have this. Wasn't no Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism, Catholicism means universal. 
It's the universal church. That's what Roman Catholicism means. The universal church of Rome. That's what Roman Catholicism means. When they say I'm a Roman Catholic, they mean I am a member of the Roman church in Italy. Italy. Rome is in Italy. That's what the Vatican City at, isn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Go to seven Rome. Uh, he, uh, 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 help me, Holy Spirit. Revelation 17. Come on. Uh, one through five. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore. That's Roman Catholicism. That sitteth upon many waters. That's Roman Catholicism. Bring it back up again. Bring my map up again. That's why I say it sit upon many waters. You can see it sit up on the Mediterranean Sea. You can see Greece down there. You see it Italy down there. The many waters. You see Italy is right there on the Metro the Mediterranean Sea, and it's on the Adriatic Sea. You come over, you can see the Atlantic Ocean, you can see the Norwegian Sea over here. You can see the North Sea where the United Kingdom is. You can see the Black Sea. That's what Roman Catholicism, that's what it means when it say, it sitteth upon many waters. That's the land. That's what the land is set at. The land is set on the waters. You can see the borders there. You can see Portugal and Spain. All of those are Roman Catholic countries. Portugal, Spain, France, and Italy, Port and uh, Romania, Hungary, uh, uh, Austria, those are Roman Greece. You got your Orthodox Greek Greek church there. Mm -hmm. That means they believe in some portions of predestination and sovereignty of God. They won't change. They Orthodox Greek, but they all of them has some form of Roman Catholicism in it somewhere, some form. This is what Charles was talking about about Pushkin. Mm -hmm. All up here in Russia, you didn't have number of black gods. Pushkin. Pushkin. All up here in Rome, all up here in Russia, is nothing up there but black gods. And in Russia, am I right, Charles? Yes. In Russia today, they still call yes. black people 2019. Yes. Today, April 20th, 2019, in Russia today, they still call black people niggers. That's what they use in Russia today. They still call them niggers in Russia today. 2019, they don't call them black, they call them niggers. Read up. And there came one of the seven angels. Come on, man, go back up to the many waters. Come on, now you got to be. Yeah. I, will show, uh, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Those are your denominations. Go ahead. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. Thank you very much. That seven heads, those are the seven hills of war of Rome and her ten powers, which is recorded in Alexander Hislop. We'll get to the seven heads, ten horns later on. Okay. Now I'm talking to you about the Edict of Toleration. It says, the facts of which the Edict of Milan once stood are still facts, though the Edict itself was, has gone the way in many another symbolic representation of historical truth. In order to Test my hypothesis, I shall assume the document reflects the position of Constantine. If it does not, then of course it cannot count for or against Constantine. It does. And the edict, and the edict persecution was brought to an end. No one whatever was to be denied the right to follow and choose the Christian observance of, or form of worship. They just gave them First Amendment right. rights. First Amendment rights was held long before the, them theists and Unitarians brought it to the shores of America. By this time, we are not at all surprised by the fact that there is nothing in the edict to indicate that Constantine was himself a Christian, and he was not. Indeed, the assumption that he was, that this was his motivation in promulgating this policy, runs into difficulties with an apparent anomaly. Namely, the toleration is extended not simply to Christianity, but to all forms of monotheism.
Theism. They don't say, I don't care what kind of form of monotheism. Mono means one God. I don't care what kind of form. I don't care what kind of shape it is. We're tolerating everything. That's why we're moving to this right here. We're moving to a gender revolution. This is Roman Catholicism. This is a National Geographic mag magazine that I bought in January 2017. This is what we're moving to, gender revolution. That means if you want, if you say you're, a, uh, uh, if you're, a, if I'm a man, which I am, and I say I want, I'm a woman, then I can be a woman based on what I say I am. That's the way I feel within myself. I feel, I feel womanly. So since I feel womanly, I am, I have the right, I have the right, right? Yes. Because it was given to me by who? Constantine, stay with what I'm teaching. Don't lose my subject. Don't y'all drift off and think that I'm trying to, I'm teaching something different. I said it came in with who? Constantine. Gender revolution was truly started by who? Constantine. Constantine. Really, if we want to be really, really serious about gender revolution, we'll go back to the what? Garden. garden. We go back to the garden. Everything mm -hmm. began in the garden. Mm -hmm. What was the gender revolution in the garden? What was the gender re revolution in the garden? You don't know? You don't know what gender revolution? I'm talking to you, Ronnie Bowie. What was it? I didn't say go read it. I asked a question. Do you know? Do you know, Glenn? No. Do you know, Ronnie Bowie? Pleasant to the eye. Desire to no, be that's, I said gender revolution. You got to know what gender is. Do you know what gender revolution is, Glenn? Man and woman. You don't? No. I asked you, did no. you know? Do you no. know? No, no. Do you know, Charles? Yes. What is gender revolution? That the woman can be as God. Thank you very much. The woman can be as God that you can change your gender. You can move from a feminine gender to a, to a what, job? Masculine. Child? No. To a man. You can move from a feminine gender to a neuter gender. Ah, uh, okay. You can be a God. Gods are genderless. We know God is a male, but the spirit is neither. We know God is a male. That means it's spiritual. But he was telling that woman, you can move from a gender to a spiritual. You can be a God. Because he told a man, you can move from a, being a man to being a God. We spiritual. Hello? Amen. Hello? Amen. So he was telling him, you can move from, fem you can move from being uh, feminine to spiritual. That's gender revolution. There's no such thing as gender revolution. Mm. Can't change your gender. You can't. God said, I, I created them what? Ma male, female. Thank you very no, much. Y'all should know this. Come on yeah. now. This, now, this not no, I'm not preaching a real deep doctrine. No. That's why I tell you guys to study and listen. That's, you should know this. Don't be like the Baptists, be dumb. I'm in Genesis. I'm in Genesis. Everybody on, the, on that, uh, sitting in them chairs should know Genesis. I just taught it Thursday night. They say gender revolution started in the garden. When Satan told them you can be as gods. That's when gender revolution said he can change your gender if you want to. As a matter of fact, if you want to go deep in gender revolution, gender revolution did happen in the garden, didn't it? Yes. How, what gender revo how did gender revolution take shape in the garden between the man and the woman? The woman told the man what to do, and the man ate from the woman's hand. Yes. The gender revolution changed, didn't it? Yes. The woman was in control. Then after God judged him, what did he tell him? No, you don't change my gender. You don't revolute and change and become what you want to carry. Said he told our woman from this day forward, the man shall rule over you. America hate the man ruling over that woman. One thing they hate in America is submission. That's why they started feminism. Because that woman did not want to submit to the male. That's what the problem is in America. So the woman spiritually, in her mind, the woman is taking the place of the man. How we know that? How we know that? Lord we got a Lord. lesbian male. Oh. Soon to be. The word male is, is masculine. Yeah. Hmm. The word male is masculine. They've been bringing gender revolution into the church for a long time. Turn your Bibles over to the book of Ephesians. Paul said there's no such thing as gender revolution. In America, it's the worship of the babe, is the worship of the babe, is the worship of the babe in the arms of the mother. Do y'all see gender revolution in the book of Ephesians? You can see it in book of Ephesians, chapter 4. I don't like to tell you guys everything Amen. all the time. Y'all should know your Bible, know it. Show me gender revolution. 
Y'all don't see it? Say, I don't see it. I don't know what you're talking about, preacher. I don't Verse see it. 22. All right. What? Verse 22. What? Read. Uh, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. No, nope. I said chapter 4. Damn, man, this chapter four. I said chapter 4. This, uh, he is reading from chapter I four. said chapter 4, but that ain't got nothing to do with right. no gender. He said that's the old man. I said chapter 4 of the book of Ephesians. Chapter no. 4. He called some. That'll help you. Oh. That's uh, gender revolution. Okay. Are you going to tell them what a scripture is, Charles, or what you're going to do? Verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. What is the word prophets? Is, what, what it's gender masculine is that? gender. What is the word prophet? It's masculine mm -hmm. gender. What is, the word, what is the word apostles? It's masculine gender. What is the word evangelists? It's masculine gender. What is the word preachers? It's masculine gender. And what else? Teacher. All That's of masculine that. Gender. All of that is masculine gender. Gender. Where we get a proper test from? There's no such thing as a proper test. Hmm. We're talking about in the body of Christ. We're talking about in the body of Christ. Don't tell me nothing about no Deborah. <laughs> she was a prophetess because her daddy was a what, Charles? Prophet. Y'all don't understand Middle Eastern custom. It nowhere says in the New Testament church, in the body of Christ, that a woman is a proper test. That's not scripture. That's paganism. That's witch worship. That's feminism. Every one of those terms in Ephesians 4, 11 through what, 13 or 14? Uh, yes, 14. 4, 11, 16 through 16. 4, 11 through 16. Every one of those, I, how you know? I looked it up. That's how I know. I parsed the word. Every one of those terms over there. It's masculine gender. Every one of them. Just like we got Masculine, feminine, and neuter gender in English. You have it in the Greek. Every one of those terms over there is masculine gender. Every one of them. Every one of them. Every one of them. <coughs> verse. Verse. It's not. There's only one verse. You told me 11 through 14. No, it's not. It's verse number 9. Okay. And verse number 7. It's verse 7 through 11. Verse number 7 through 11. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore Christ said, this is what Christ said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, Christ gave gifts unto men and women. There we go right there. He said he gave gifts unto men. It do not say he gave no gifts up to no woman. It's right there in your scripture. That's masculine gender. He say, now, now that he ascended, what is it that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? That means he died and he resurrected. That's all. He had ascended. He that ascended on the right hand side of the Father. That's all it means. It's the same also that ascended up far above all heavens. That he feel all things. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. The only ones left is a pastor and teacher. There is no more prophets. There is no more apostles. Because the church is perfected now. The church is teleos. The church is teleos. When I say teleos, when I say the church is perfected. When I say the church is perfected. When I say the church is perfected, it's teleos. Or teleos. Teleos. That means it is complete. Church is complete now. We're in apostasy right now. That's what we are in right now. We are in an apostasy. The, the professing church is falling away from the true teaching of Jesus Christ. We have Adam and Eve. We have the worship of the babe in the arms of the mother. The worship of the babe in arms. That's what's going on now. That's gender revolution. That means that the children and the woman is beginning to rule. That's paganism being spread all over the world. 
That's gender revolution. The revolution of the gender. What is happening is the male is decreasing and the female and the child is in increasing. That's what it was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. Read it to me, Charles. Tell them where you're going. Isaiah the third chapter. Isaiah third chapter. Read it for me, Charles, while I get it for me, while I'm continuing with this. All of those terms over there in verse number 11. All of those terms over there in verse number 11 are masculine, are masculine gender. That's the grammatical structure of those words. They masculine gender. There is not feminine gender. Easter is woman's worship. Easter is the worship of the babe in the arms of the mother. And where are our children today? They are in the arms of America. Our children are in the arms of America. That is the woman up with the babe in arms. Read, Charles. Tell them where you at, please. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm at Isaiah the third chapter. I'm going to start at one for clarity. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water, the mighty man and the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the prudent, the ancient, the captain of fifty, the honorable man, the counselor, the cunning artificer, the eloquent orator, and I will give children to be their princes. Okay, now I want you to go back and read verse number one again, okay. uh, Charles. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. Now, what is he taking away? What is he taking away? The stay and the staff. What is he taking away, the, Ronnie? The authority of the look at oh. your scripture. Everybody look at the scripture. Okay. Amen. What is he taking away, Ock? The staff, the whole stale bread. And what is he taking away, Glenn? Jerusalem and... Speak, you don't know. You're not paying attention. What is he taking away, Charles? The stay, the staff. What is he taking away, Ronnie? The stay and the staff. Read the scripture, Charles. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. Stop! What is he taking away, Ock? The stay and the staff. Who is taking it away, Ronnie? The Lord. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Pay attention, Glenn. See, this is why I tell y'all it's very easy. Just pay attention. Read the verse again, Charles. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff. Okay. The whole stay of bread. The whole stay of bread. Go the, ahead. And the whole stay of water. Thank you. So he's taking that away, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Next verse. The mighty man. What is the stay and the staff, Ronnie? The mighty man. Thank you very much. What else is the stay and the staff, Ock? The man of war. What else is to stay in the staff, Charles? The judge. What else, Charles? The prophet. What else, Charles? The prudent. What else, Charles? The ancient. What else, Charles? Captain of 50. Ronnie, what is the gender of every one of those people? Mm, masculine. Mm, mm. Amen! <laughs> How you like that, Ark? Love it. How you like that, Ronnie? Amen. Love it. Amen. Yeah. He's That's taking the man away because he won't take up his position. He's weak as water. Mm. He won't do the will of God. So God said, all right, you don't want to do the will. I put you in the hands of a woman and a child. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that the truth, Ronnie Boy? Amen. Is that it, Charles? Yes. Y'all want to read it again? I don't have to make <laughs> nothing up as I go along. Read it again, Charles, verse number one. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread, the whole stay of water, the mighty man. See what I mean? And then he said, the mighty man. He's taking him away. Yes. Read, Charles. The mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the prudent, the ancient, the captain of 50, <laughs> the honorable man, <laughs> the counselor, <laughs> the cunning artificer, <laughs> the eloquent orator. Wow. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. That is a shame. Go ahead, child. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Read again. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against an ancient. The child shall behave him 
self how against the ancient he proudly, excuse me proudly against thank the you ancient. very much slow down i want them to understand Amen. what time we are living in we are in an apostasy we are living right now in the apostasy that's recorded in second thessalonians chapter 2 verse 8 we are in it of falling away in apostasy that woman and that child is ruling Read again, Charles. And the verse five, and the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another. Thank you. The people are we being oppressed yes. by one another? Yes. yes. Yes, we are. We oppress one another. White man oppress the white man. Yes. Do the black man oppress the black man? Yes. Do the white community kill those in the white? Community. Yes. Yes. We have the Columbine shooters, all them college shooters. Florida. Florida. All Do the people. white man oppress the white man? Yes. yes. Do the black man oppress the black man? Yes. yes. Thank you very much. It's not just happening in the black community. No. Mexican against Mexican, Puerto Rican against Puerto Rican, all of them. Asian against Asian. Mankind. God doing it. He's took away the what? The stay, mm -hmm. the staff, the whole stay of bread, the whole stay of water, the mighty man, Thank the you. man of war, Thank you. the judge, yep. the prophet, yep. the prudent, yep. the ancient, yep. the captain of 50, yep. the honorable man, yep. the counselor, yep. the cunning artificer, yep. the eloquent or Oh, God. Yep. That's all different. Oh, that's why they don't know nothing. What? That's why they don't know nothing. Why they don't know nothing? Because the Lord has taken away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay, the staff, the whole stay of bread, the whole stay of water, the mighty man, the man of war, the judge, the prophet, the prudent, the ancient, the captain of 50, the honorable man, the counselor, the cunning artificer, the eloquent orator. And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient mm -hmm. and the base against the honorable. Uh -huh. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, mm -hmm. Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. Where's the woman shall rule over it? Oh, uh... Uh, that's verse 12. What verse are you at now? I'm at verse 7. Read verse 7. Okay. In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer, uh -huh. for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Uh-oh, what they're going to stop? Mm -hmm. It's taken away. Yeah. It's taken away. Yes. Go ahead. Make me not a ruler of the people. That, that's what he said. He's going to take it away. It's yes. gone. Yes. Read. Verse 8. For Jerusalem is ruined. Uh-huh. Judah is fallen. Come on. Because their tongue and their doings against the Lord. Thank you very much. Amen. They want to vote. They put a woman in charge. <laughs> the male vote is against the Lord. You got this bastard right here, Willie Wilson. That's what I call him, a bastard. I say it again. This bastard. He seen that he couldn't win the, the mayoral race, so he supported a lesbian. And this ignorant woman, Laura Washington, she wrote back in December, I wrote that businessman Willie Wilson had a long way to go to win over the LGBTQ voters in his mayoral campaign. Today, Wilson has arrived. This was March 11, 2019. Today, Wilson has arrived, at least symbolically, with his endorsement a former police board president, she was a police board president. So who was she ruling, according to the scripture? Who was she ruling? The mighty man. The mighty man! The man of war! Mm -hmm. Y'all don't even see the prophecy of God taking place, you jackass preachers! She was a, she was, she was head she was, God help me in Jesus' name. Let me slow down. She was president of police board. That's a bunch of men. Mm -hmm. That's a woman ruling men. That's Genesis chapter 1. That's Genesis chapter 3. Because you have hearkened to the voice of 
the woman, what is that last scripture you read? What did that man say, Charles? He said, verse 7. What did he say? And that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be a healer, for I in my house, for in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Come on. Make me not a ruler. Don't make people. me no ruler. Get the woman. That's what it is. That's why many hate this ministry here. No woman would preach here. No woman would teach here. You teach the children, and you can teach other women. Fine. You will not rule over a man in a narrow hold dose ministry. Amen. No, you will not. No, you ain't coming here with now one of them damn United States of America Christ, uh, Roman Catholicism ideas. There, has, there should not be a woman ruling nowhere. No. Not in the kingdom of God. Not in the body of Christ. In American church, Roman Catholicism church, you see them everywhere. That is the fulfillment of the prophecy of the professing church. The true church, which the narrow dose ministry is a part of, is pure. The professing church, that's why people hate me. And y'all hate me out there, you Baptists. Well, you got all them women on these women boards and all of that. That is Roman Catholicism. That was started by Constantine in 312, 313 AD when he issued his edict of toleration. That's why we got this so-called thing called a doggone gender revolution. And this is going on all over the world. Yes, it is. The, the church is in an apostasy. That's why you got so much sex going on. Y'all couldn't, you can't indict him. Hell, the Roman Catholic doing it. If you're going to send our Kelly to jail, Pope, Pope, ex-Pope Benedict contradicts post Pope Francis in unusual intervention on sexual abuse. You got to lock all them up. Cardinals. How you going to lock, how you going to lock him up, you black women, and not lock him up? You got so many children that are Roman Catholic by priests, they do not even know who their father oh, is. That's right. <laughs> this is April 11th. This is April 11th. This is April 11th, 2019. Rome. Breaking years of silence on major church affairs. Pope Demetrius Benedict the 16th has written a lengthy letter devoted to clerical sex abuse in which he attributes the crisis to a breakdown of church and societal moral teaching. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. The church ain't teaching right. He said and no, it's society it's teaching right. right. That is a Roman Catholic priest that just said ain't no such thing as gender <laughs> revolution. I'm going to read it one more time. I'm going to read it one more time. Gender revolution is worship with the baby in arms. The worship of the mother with the baby in arms. That's Tammuz worship. That's Ishtar. I'm going to read it one more time. This is April 11th. This came out. This is by Chico Harlan and Stefano Petrelli. It came from Rome. Did you hear what I just said, Ronnie Bowie? It came from Rome, Ark. This come from Rome. This article come from Rome. It was posted in the Washington Post. It come from Rome. It was post. It was sent from Rome to Washington. And they posted it in the Washington Post. And it says, Rome. Breaking, year, breaking years, Ronnie, breaking years of silence on major church affairs, Pope Demetrius Benedict XVI has written a lengthy letter devoted to clerical sexual sex abuse. Clerical means priest, priestly sexual abuse. That's what clerical in which letter he attributes, he puts forth the crisis, the apostasy, the crisis, the crisis, 
The creases. Let me give you the word creases in the Greek. Go to St. John chapter 3. This is the creases. The word, con mm -hmm. the word condemnation in, the, in, 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 in John chapter 3, this is the creases. Where is it at, Charles? 3 it's, what? It's uh, 319. John, John 319. Mm -hmm. What it says? And this is the condemnation. That's the word creases. K-R-I-S-I-S, Ronnie. That's where we get our word C-R-I-S-I-S. -I -I -S. This is the creases. This is the crisis. That word condemnation is the word crisis. K-R-I-S-I-S. That's where we get our word crisis. It's crisis in the Greek, but ah, that's where we get our word crisis. This is the crisis. That's how you read it. Read, Charles. And this is the crisis, that light has come into the world. And men love darkness rather than light. All right. According to what I read, what is the darkness that men like? When I read off of here, do you remember? Yes or no? I ain't got time. No, no. Sex abuse. Okay. That's the sex. darkness. Men love sex abuse. Rather than light. Rather than what? Light. What is light? Woman and man. Man and woman is light. Darkness is man and man, woman and woman. Working on sin again. <laughs> that's crisis, ain't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that's what got us in the crisis. The reason we're in the crisis is because of man and man, man and man, and woman and woman. That's a crisis. This is the crisis. The crisis is sex abuse. The crisis is... It's gender revolution, sex abuse. Yes. Yes, it is. It's the worship of the babe in arms. It's the worship of the baby in the arms of the mother. We look at it spiritually. That's the children in the arms of America. That's paganism. That began in the garden. That's Roman Catholicism. That's what it is. It's the worship of Aphrodite. It's the worship of Ishtar. It's the worship of Easter. I wish I had, I, I, I had these printed out for y'all, and I'll get to them in a minute. I had them printed out for y'all, but I don't have them. That began in Egypt. The sex of Bruce began in Egypt. If you read Leviticus 18 and Leviticus 20, he said, don't be like those Canaanites. He used Hamites, he used the Egyptians to show us what sex of Bruce was. So when he called them out of Egypt, he called them out of the crisis, didn't he? Yes. Mm -hmm. He called them out of the crisis, didn't he? Yes. Because it was a crisis in Egypt. Turn your Bible to Leviticus 18. I don't know how I got here, but I'm staying here now. Go to Leviticus 18. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Let's go back and read that, Charles. Go back to John. John and read. This is the crisis. This is the crisis. Okay. And th uh, John three nineteen, and this is the crisis that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Thank you very much. Is sex is sex abuse evil? Yes. 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 Go back. Go to Leviticus. Leviticus eighteen. Leviticus eighteen. Go to Leviticus eighteen. Go to Leviticus eighteen. This is yeah. why the home is wrecked in America, isn't it? Yes. The home in America is just totally in disaster. Yes. yes. If you find a home that is intact, just a little bit, that man is not ruling that, no. that woman is. Yes. Because he won't stand up to that woman. No. No, he ain't. God has removed a staff. All right. I told you to go to Leviticus. Eight. Leviticus, didn't it? Yes. yes. I love this, man. I love this teaching. I love this teaching. Leviticus, the church is not polluted. The professing church is. I told you to go to Leviticus 18, right? Yes. Look at verse number three. Are you there? Yes. It says, look, all right. And the Lord, let's look at one. 
The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God, after the doings of the land of what? Egypt. Egypt. Thank you. That's why you had what? Clerical Clerical sex sexual abuse. abuse was in Egypt. The priest. That's why you had clerical sex abuse in Egypt. That's why the Bible records the first clerical sex abuse is in Egypt. Well, can't say that. The first clerical sex abuse recorded in the Bible is in Genesis 6. <laughs> the sons of God married the daughters of men. That's when clerical sex abuse, because the sons of God was priests. Talk to me, Charles. Amen. Yes, they were. They was the only one that can offer acceptable sacrifice to God. The term ain't there, but, uh, but the analogy is principle. the principle, thank you, Charles, Amen. the rule is there. The first priest was Adam. Then he taught Abel. Then Seth killed Adam, and God gave him a, then, then Cain killed Abel, and God gave him a substitute, Seth. After the doings of the land of Egypt, Leviticus 18 and 3, after the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein you dwelt, did he bring them out of that darkness? Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. Shall ye not do? And after their doings of the land, of what? Canaan. Canaan. Whether I bring you, you shall not what? Do. do. Neither shall you walk in their what? Ordinances. You can't keep Christmas. You can't keep Ishtar. Ishtar is the worship of the babe. And uh, this is Ishtar. Ishtar is Virgin Mary, the worship of the babe in arms. This is Ishtar right here. That's Ishtar. That's the worship of the babe in arms. Where did this begin at? It began mm -hmm. in Egypt. Bring up my pictures, Jeremiah. Here go Ishtar right here. That's Ishtar. That's Black Madonna. You got the worship of the babe in the arms. That's a boy. This is a boy. This is a boy sitting in his mama's lap. Sexual abuse. <laughs> this is a boy. Sitting in his mama's lap. All the paintings over in Russia are black. They still calling a black man in Russia nigger today. They call him a nigger. But guess what color his god and his goddess is? Black. This says black Madonna, Russian, miniature, or painting on porcelain. You know, ain't no white gods over there. Mm -mm. Next one, Jeremiah. Or Caleb. There you go right there. That's in Italy and France, y'all. That's the worship of the mother with the babe in arms. That's the queen of heaven. That's the Virgin Mary. That's Aphrodite. Get your Ishtar book. Ishtar book. Your Ostara book. You got the name, Charles. You got the page mark? Yes. Told you to mark the page. Yes. What page? Tell him what page. 121. Go to 121. Amen. Go to 121. Amen. Who is this, Ock? Uh, I, I can't. Ock! Oh. Who is this? I, I, uh, Who is that, Charles? Akala Juicy. Who is that, Charles? Akala. Who is that, Charles? Avela. Go ahead. Amathea. Who is Amathea? Amathea is Greek. The goat. Who, I didn't ask oh. you what the word was. I say, who is Amathea? It's Ostara. Who? Ostara. Another name for Ostara. Who is Amathea? Ak. Ishtar. Where's it at? Where you at? Right. Where you at? Right here. Who is Amathea? The, the goat. Thank you oh, very oh, much. Yeah. Okay. I asked you who. Oh, okay. okay. Amen. You're not listening. I said, who is Al Mathia? Who is Al Mathia, Charles O'Hearn? The goat besieged Nanny, who suckled Zeus and other that, What is this baby doing? She's suckling oh, Zeus. Mm. I'm trying to get them some understanding. I'm asking them who he is so they can know what we're talking about. Okay. We're not just going to call him. 
a bunch of names. See, I try to get y'all involved. Y'all not hearing me, Ock and Charles. Who is Almathea? The Greek visage nanny. Who she struggled. a Greek? Yeah. Bring my room. Where's Europe at? In Greece. Bring my, bring my picture up. Look what Greece said. It was black. It's in the south. It's south of Finland. That's south at the bottom. That's east that way. This is west this way. Where you see Ireland at in the Atlantic Ocean, that's west. Over here where you see Russia going over the towards the right-hand side of the map, that's east. Down is north. I mean, down is south, up is north. In case y'all don't know your directions. So you can know how to read a map. Because many of you don't know your directions. So when you look at these maps, you don't understand what you're looking at. This is worship with Easter. is worship, worship of the babe in the arms of the mother. So let me get to my page. So we had Amethia. Yes. Right? Yes. It, it tells you on 121, some goddesses of Ostara. Would you bring, up the, uh, bring back up the woman? Thank you very much. This is in Greece. You look at... You look at uh, <clears throat> I evil. That's Irish. It said a fairy goddess who, who represented and lived within the land when, uh, when she determined that the sexual needs of the women of her region were not being satisfied. So what did she go and get, Ronnie? What? Man, go head on, man. So what did you, you, you gone, man. So what, when her sexual needs weren't being satisfied, what did she go and get, y'all? She got, she got a man. When her sexual Lord. needs weren't being satisfied, it said her sexual needs was not being satisfied. What did she go and get? The baby. Oh, Lord have mercy. Oh. She went and got a woman. Oh. oh. It said her sexual needs were not being satisfied. By who? The man. The man. So what she went and got? A woman. What's wrong with y'all, man? What's wrong with y'all? It says right here she ordered that the local men give the women the sexual performances they were demanding. I know what it says. When she found out okay. that her sexual needs was not being satisfied, what did she go and get? A woman. Mm -hmm. And so it, and then it says here it became worship, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. And like he said were not being satisfied, she ordered that the local men give the women that started, now that's prostitution. I understand what it's saying. But when her local need was, she ordered the men to get the women. The sexual performance they were demanding. So that started your Aphrodite, they started going up to temple worship. But when her sexual needs, we bring it today, is not being satisfied by a man. Oh. Hey, man, look at here. See, y'all not paying attention to what I'm saying. Lori Lightfoot. Her sexual fantasy, her sexual needs were not being satisfied. What did Lori Lightfoot go get? A woman. Amen. Let woman get tired of that man and she don't get the fantasy she, she wants. What she go get? She go get a woman. That's my point I'm, I'm making. Okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. Now, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Albathea, the goat visage, the goat visage nanny who suckled juice and other Greek deities. Her magical treats never ran dry. She is associated today with the, with the constellation of Capricorn. What did she go get? Oh, no, she, no, she, no got, she didn't. She got a goat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now you understand what I'm saying. What did she go get? She got a goat. Thank you. She's associated with Capricorn, Eros. So she's not getting a sexual sex fetish from the man, so she go get a man or she go get a woman. All right, then you got, you got uh, Aphrodite. I'm going to get to Aphrodite. I'm going to come back to Aphrodite. Then you get uh, Arduino, Welsh. A archer goddess of the hunt. Of the hunt. Who does she would go get? She got an animal. Who, what, what was his name? Pan. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. I'm trying to show y'all what it means, okay? Okay. okay I understand what the book's saying, Charles. Don't get me wrong. But when a sexual satisfaction is not made by a man, a, a, a man to a woman, what do she go get? 
She go get a woman. A woman. She go a woman. get a woman. A what woman. did it tell us in the book of Romans? Oh, Even the women the did thing. leave the natural the use, use of the man. body. Yeah. Come on. Don't lose me, man. Okay. I know what this definition is saying. We're living in an apostasy, though, right? Yes. yes. That's what I'm teaching. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. yes. All right, now. I know what the definition is saying. Artemis. Archer goddess of the hunt and the moon who rules the woodlands. Then you got your Celtic, a bear and a hunter goddess of the continental Celts. Then you got Antalanta, Greek, woodland goddess of animals, sexuality, and the hunt who was raised by bears. bears. Yeah. She had many lovers. lovers. Thank you very much. Did she have some women? Yes. yes. Thank you very much, man. Including, including mm -hmm. her, husband. her husband, with whom she was never, never content. content. Thank Hold you on. very much. She was never content. Now you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. My next picture, the next one, they're going to worship by the mother and the baby and all. That's Roman Catholicism. Mm -hmm. That's over in Russia. That's the word. And they black. Mm -hmm. They worship not white. Mm -hmm. Aphrodite was not white. She was black. We'll come back to that in a minute. I'm going to say that and read it to you. We got, this is gender revolution. You don't see a man. They worship the woman with the baby in arms. That's why over in England you got a queen. They worship the woman with the baby in the arms. In America, they worship the woman is supposed to be the queen. The baby is the king. He's ruling. Hello? Amen. Next picture. There you go right there. This called this, you know what this is called? Mm -mm. This picture is called pure chocolate. You got the worship of the mother with the babe in arms. Giving the baby a high five. Daddy gone. You look at her, she said, Daddy gone. High five. <laughs> and that's what, look at it. Say, Daddy gone. High five, baby. High five. Daddy gone. High five. Me and you. High five. High five. Daddy gone. He looking up at his mother. High five. Daddy gone. Look at him naked. The worship of the mother with the babe in the arms. The worship of the babe in the arms of the mother. The worship of the, the, worship of the mother with the baby in her arms. That's what gender revolution is. That's what is you looking at Easter. Next picture. Go again. Roman Catholicism. You see the sun god around her head? Mm -hmm. That's a representative of the sun. That's the sun god around her head. And you got the mother, she clinging the baby. That's the worship of the, worship of the mother with the baby in arms. Next one. There you go right there. Another mm. black picture. Reaching up at the mother. Same thing. That's the worship, that's the worship of the mother with the baby in arms. Man is gone. The staff and the, the, sta the stay in the staff is gone. Who is that? That's, who is that? What's the next one? Uh, let's look through here. Look, look at uh, where's the look? Where the black one at? Let's find Ishtar. Ishtar, is Ishtar in here? You got rug, look, look at Rimpit. Look, look. You got you got Rimpit. Got the Egyptian youthful goddess of spring, whose symbol is a newly sprouted palm tree. Mm -hmm. You got the Lithuanian. You got Libera. You got the the uh, 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 Roman. You got the you got, look at Maya, page 124, Maya, Greek, mm -hmm. goddess of spring, childbirth, and flowers from whom the mouth, the month of May is named. Mm -hmm. uh, you got Flora, goddess of flowers, often known as spring sabbats. Look at Freya. Yes. What is that day? That's Friday. And what does it say, Charles? This popular Nordic goddess was connected with both life and death and had a voracious sexual appetite and many lovers. She would abandon the earth in winter and return to store it each spring. Well, we just read that somebody else about had many lovers. Who was that? That was uh, that was Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta and, and where was that at? That was in Greece. And where was this one at? This one was in Scandinavia. Thank you very much. It came down from the north, didn't it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Go to uh, uh, who else we want to look at in here? I'm just looking at the names. That's all I'm doing. Hmm. I'm just looking at the names. 
Look at Eos, Greek, mm -hmm. virgin goddess of the what? Dawn. Greek. Mm -hmm. Who had a sexual appetite, excuse me, a strong sexual appetite, and sometimes, and sometimes kidnapped desirable men to service her. Thank you very much. In Greek mythology, her great love was the archer god Orion. Thank you very much, the archer god. Now, who was the archer god? Archer, 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 uh, archer, Cupid. archer. Cupid! Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> this is their imagination. Next picture. There you go right there. Another one. Worship of the mom and the, with the worship of the baby in the arms of the mother. They ain't gonna never find the father. Next one. Some God again. You got the mother and the son. You see the sun around the head. That's the worship of the sun. That's what they worship. They call sun God. When you see that, that's called the halo around the head. You see the stars in there. You can even see the, the sex worship in there. In those little signs on the vesture. Next one. Where does that come from? That's Egypt. Mm -hmm. What is he sucking? A breast. breast. He, he's sucking a breast. He's putting a breast in the mouth. There you go right there. It's the worship of the child in the arms of the mother. Worship of the babe in arms. That's what it is. That's, that's Easter right there. That's Ishtar right there. That's what that is. That's the worship of the baby in the arms of the mother. That's gender revolution. That's gender revolution. Next one. There you go right there. That's another one. I'm showing you all of these. I had my, oh, Ishtar. Leave it up. Let me read you Ishtar. I got all of these for y'all. I wish I knew I was going to go here. I would have brung them. Ishtar. Ishtar in Sumeria and Babylonia. Ishtar was the love goddess of the Babylonians. Her worship came down from earliest times in Sumeria where her lover was Tammuz. She was the goddess of mothers and prostitutes. Mm -hmm. Go back to the Egypt one. Go back to Ishtar. There go Tammuz right there in the arms. That's Tammuz in the arms. Ishtar was the love goddess of the Babylonians. Her worship came down from the earliest times in Sumeria, where her lover was Tammuz. She was the goddess of mothers and prostitutes of love and war. Ishtar is said to be the daughter of Sin, the moon god. Her lover was Tammuz, the sun god. Her lover was Tammuz, the sun god. 